Hey guys, this is Vidas and uh, today I'm going to do another training for you. Analysis of uh, Fuke in C major BWV 547 by Hans Sebastian Bach. Um, 547 slash 2 because it's a few. This tutorial was requested by Rolf who is uh, our uh, BMC subscriber. Uh, so I'm very glad to create this tutorial for you and for others who might be needing needing it too all right let's see i have now the score in front of me in the score with fingering and pedaling if you need help with articulation articulate legato my fingering and pedaling can provide uh, not only for the few but also for the entire uh, prelude and fugue cycle. The link will be available in the description of this uh, video to the score. Okay, so of course, let's take a look at the fugue. Um, I will be using Martini Kerk samples in Groningen, but I will not play very loudly for you i will not play entire things but but just uh, uh, excerpts with themes for you so that you could understand what's going on themes and maybe um inversions things like that so pedal 16 and 8 octave and prestant and on the hauptwerk uh, we would like to play with octave 8 that would be enough yeah And you will hear my voice also in, on top of that. Uh, I won't uh, mute the microphone for this analysis. Excellent. So now, entire thing, entire thing lasts um, four four pages in my edition from Bach's Gesellschaft Ausgabe. Um, from the 19th century, uh, where I have written the fingering. The, the fingering is from the slow motion video, which was transcribed by Alan Peterson. Thank you so much. And um, now uh, let's take a look at how this fugue is constructed. This fugue is one of the most intricate fugues that Bach created because it has almost in every measure in every measure um, something uh, from the thematic material of the few if you don't remember the few and the prelude uh, the prelude starts in 9 8 like this like this with louder registration obviously i just published by the way an old recording of this prelude and fugue on my channel from st john's church from 2013 now it's 2023 and i played it in 2013 10 years old recording but i hope it's it's useful to you too you can check it out so the fugue all right the fugue of the theme uh, starts very simple and it has just one measure duration. Let's see how we are doing. Maybe this, maybe this angle is okay for teaching uh, without the bass. Bass enters in the third page with augmentation. It, and uh, that's very very interesting moment also contrapuntally but so it starts with with this uh, subject like this uh, starts on the first scale degree in C major C and then ends on the fifth scale degree G right five to one and uh, it's important to know that uh, the, there are five voices in the entire few. Uh, first, uh, we don't start with the with the soprano 
but with the alto. That's the alto entrance. Okay, and then on the second measure, maybe I will note it also in the score. How many, uh, how many, how many of those? One, two. It's important to count thematic material also. So in the in the tenor. Maybe it's called uh, the first tenor because there are two voices in the left hand in this case. And then uh, this is not a subject but answer because in, it's in the dominant. In the third measure we have uh, something in the subject uh, material again. In the second uh, or the first bass maybe because it's quite low. Sometimes it's difficult to see which voice is this because of range. It's not vocal tune. No vocal vocal would be too uh, too for vocals would be too wide for choir. All right. After this, um, yes, we could actually discuss also the counterpoint after the theme enters. In the first measure, in the second measure, there is a counterpoint. Like, like in the next voice also. And the, the subject or answer is like this. Next subject enters. Here is the counterpoint. counterpoint. All right. So sometimes those counterpoints are um, uh, throughout the entire thing, or sometimes not. The composers choose to stick to the counterpoint, or sometimes they create new ones into the new subjects. In this case, it's still consistent counterpoint. All right. In measure four, there is um, no subject, no new subject. We have three voices so far. And in, in the new line, the second line, first measure, in the soprano. Here we have the fourth subject entry, like this. Okay. Also, it's in uh, in C major, but now we have uh, a little bit of sequences which go to to F major. Like here. With B flat. But it's not complete. Not complete um, modulation. Now next, the fifth subject entry is right here. Uh, second line last last measure in the alto that's what we call counter exposition after all the voices have entered now we have another uh, sequence of subject and answer entries okay in the alto Now in the left hand, in the tenor, number six. Right, you have to circle uh, these things and, and find in your own score that you are playing from. So let's play from the 
fifth subject entry. Now, there was another subject entry, but it's a little um, uh, adjusted to the key in the alto, 7. Maybe I will circle each note of the first entry note, so that we would know where is the start. Right? Four, five, six, seven. So far there are seven. So from seven. A minor. G major. Did we miss something? No. Sequences are formed from the thematic material, uh, from the uh, strings of eight notes, or the 16 notes also. So that was the sequence, leading to the cadence in G major. And the bass. That's number eight. Did we have number nine so far? Yes, 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 yes. Third line, alto, third measure, number nine. Adjusted from C major, like that. And another counter exposition uh, begins right afterwards. What we have here uh, in the second second half of of that last measure, fourth line, is tenth subject entry. Like this, it's in C major, but goes to the G major area as well. But then comes back. Maybe we have another entry? No, that's not complete entry. Or maybe it is, maybe 11th. with different meters, rhythms maybe, because you see by this time, by 11th entry, there is a complication of material and Bach creates this contrapuntal development right away. And he aims basically for one subject entry in each measure, more or less. Okay, next. And next. Uh -huh. in the uh, number 12 would be in the uh, tenor the last measure of that page page one like this in the in the in this in the tonic afterwards then we have number 
13 in the bass. Starting from C. Right. E minor. Okay. In the alto, we have here number fourteen appearance of the subject. Okay, and then, and then, in A minor, number 15. So together they would sound like this. Sequence leading go back to C major, probably. Let's hear that's still A minor. A little bit of F major, C major. Let's see if we had any themes. No, just sequences, sequences, sequences. Like this. At the end of the second line, there is one more appearance in the in the tenor, uh, number sixteen. I'm counting the full full uh, subjects here, not uh, truncated versions. You, there are more, of course, them. So together with other voices, they're sounding like this. at C major and now G major and uh, now we have something which is called inversion of the theme uh, in the soprano number 17 uh, measure 2 line 2 line 3 actually measure to number 17. It's inversion because the intervals are inverted. If in the original would be down and up, now have down and up, but in different uh, direction. Up, down, 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 up, up, down, down. On the in original was down, up, 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 down, down, up, up. You see, that's very interesting contrapuntal uh, trick inversion of the of the theme of the subject. Seventeen appearance. Okay, so let's play from here. A minor. Uh -huh. In the alto, next measure would be 18, also in version. Let's see what kind of uh, key is this, maybe D minor. Yes. Uh -huh. In the next measure.
Oh, it's it's kind of uh, adjusted. Number 19. Like this. Also inversion. It doesn't sound nice on its own, but together with other voices. in the tenor number 20 also in version so together with other voices leading to another key G major it's almost a theme but it's not because intervals are not the same A minor cadence we have cadence in A minor Uh -huh. Probably next would be number 21, the last measure on the second page in the alto, in A minor key. All right, and then before that, 21 and 22 in the next page right away. also in A minor. Let's listen how both of them interact. That's inversion, of course, inverted intervals. Now in the tenor, 23. Probably D minor, like this. Oh, and then in the alto, at the half measure, it's 24, like this. also in D minor. You see, in almost in every measure there are either one subject or even more subjects. That's called art fugue. Uh, the art fugue, because there are different kinds of fugues. Uh, uh, and uh, this is specifically uh, directed towards like the art of the fugue, writing of the fugue, like scholastic fugues, right? Uh, intellectual, very intellectual not sensual. Okay, so starting from the top of the page. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Alto. Tenor. minor 25 now and 26 would be half measure later in soprano and in soprano oh but in 25 is a normal subject But 26 is inversion in A minor. So together they create a really beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. 
D minor, going to G minor. Soprano. Inversion probably, it's 27. Here, second line, first measure. Like here. So together with other voices. G minor. Uh, going into C minor, alto. Inversion. That would be 28. Together with other voices. In the in the tenor, but played with the left hand. Another inversion, twenty nine, twenty nine. Uh -huh, next line, number thirty. That's not inversion, that's a regular subject in F minor. Oh, going to C minor. Alto. Another subject in alto, C minor 31. In, in in C minor, but that's because we're approaching augmentation in the pedals. Here, the dominant. Tonic. And then dominant. It's all kinds of stratos now with the augmentation in the pedals. So preparing the pedals now. Preparing the pedals and I probably will need to show you the pedal also from now on. Uh, so the first, the next entry would be uh -huh. in the in the in the first bass in the left hand thirty three. Okay, and then in the pedals. Augmentation twice as slow. Where there is a quarter note, now it's half note. Where there is a sixteen note, now it's 
eight nodes, right, and so on. Uh, 20, 34. So it takes twice as long than others. Okay. Maybe I'll still show show you the score from this because it would be interesting to see. Now, aha, in the soprano. In the soprano, 35. So let's let's play from here with all voices. The six would be in the alto. In the alto, last measure of um, line four of page three. And right after this, pedals. Next would be 37 in augmentation. Anything else? No, not yet. Sequence. A minor. is going you see C major A minor F major D minor alternating thirds major minor major minor that's very common baroque music trick also sequences like this down minor third major third minor third major third and then the key is alternating parallel thirds also in parallel keys C major A minor zero accidentals f major d minor right one one flat so the last page starts like this This it's very interesting in the in the tenor. So this would mean thirty. I would be, think it's thirty-eight. In the tenor, thirty-eight. Together with voices, others. Oh, in the in the next voice. Uh -huh. 
39. That's it's in the tenor. 39 going to F minor and C minor in the bass in the pedals Augmentation number forty. That's probably, probably, probably C minor, C major area. Besides that, no, not yet. In the pedals, number forty one, forty one. the strings of diminished chords like this four four diminished chords and they build like this on the keyboards like this so from F sharp from A flat, from A, and from D, which is basically like the first one, right? All three um, uh, versions of diminished chords here. Uh, and this is very good before the last um, progression. The last cadence. Obviously, uh, if you want to improvise um, on these uh, on these harmonies, diminished harmonies, you can do that. Time could be different also, but keeping the same harmonies uh, with your recitatives. Now the pedal point in the tonic signifies the uh, uh, tonic key and modulation excursion to the subdominant key as well to the F major. Now we have the last strings of subjects. And obviously straight or canonic entrances. Before the first subject finishes, you have the second and the second and the next. Uh, number forty-two in the in the left hand part in the that's first bass. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Now the last uh, two lines, third measure. Alto. Like a repetition. 43. F major, right? And now soprano. 44 in C major. And in the tenor. 45. Oh. So we have more in maybe we could have the last uh, two measures also but different rhythms same notes like this in the first bass 46 I would think yeah penultimate measure so starting from the pedal point it would sound like this play articulate legato even in in inner voices that's very very important in this kind of music and that's what what is difficult about it this complexity contrapuntal with 46 subject entries in various forms in inversion and even in uh, augmentation do we have by the way inversion and augmentation yes yes mm -hmm number 41 and number 40 yeah Bach uh, explores all those things wonderful field I hope uh, Roy found it useful this analysis and if you're curious about the score and fingerings check out the description of this tutorial I have the link available to the score as well Thank you so much, good luck in your practice, let me know how it goes and uh, please send me more of your questions, I love helping you grow as an organist, thank you so much. And see you next time with another tutorial or video or research.